Okay, so it's finally time to do a paint with me again. I know it has been a while, but we are going to do our best to put one together today. So I'm going to create a llama look. I have never done a llama nail art before, so this is something very, very new. But we're just going to kind of have fun with it. We're kind of doing the whole unicorn bunny nail art style that I did a while back, meaning... It's on a sheer base, which the sheer base that I used is a Zoya polish. And I will tell you what it is called in just a moment. But for what I'm doing right now, I'm just using the Midi Candy Zero Zero brush. And I am making the kind of like the face and the chest area. We kind of just went to make an elongated rectangle with curved edges <laughs> that was you know kind of a weird description but oh well basically this is our base for the llama itself we are going to be adding more details on it top which will make it to the point look more like a llama so now i'm gonna kind of gonna try to do the ears. I feel like I need to even out the head. I always feel weird at doing art from this angle because I can't like see so let me check this real quick. Okay it's not terribly off-centered. I think what I'm gonna do is widen it a little bit this way. I have a terrible time centering things. I don't know about you guys. Maybe that's just me, but I have a terrible time with shaping things. Not shaping, centering. Gosh. See, I can't even talk. Okay, so now we're just going to do the ears. So I'm going to start with like two straight lines going up. And then I'm going to kind of piece them out to the sides. Not the inside, but the sides. Which are then going to create my ears because we are going to add a floral crown as I do with all of my animals because it's kind of like a cute thing to do. <laughs> and now I'm going to kind of eyeball the fact that like maybe the head would be finished about here. I'm just going to put a little line here and I'm going to try to like make little fuzzy edges to give our little llama some realness. I don't know. He's obviously he, she she because she's gonna wear flowers but she's not gonna look real but you guys know what I mean so that is what I'm gonna do on the edges of like the start of its neck yeah okay so now that we have that I'm gonna let that bit dry and I will go off camera but I'm not gonna do anything so there is the base that I use acrylic paint for just white acrylic paint oh and before I let this dry. I will show you what I use as the base color. Base color wise, I used Zoya's Bella, which is this nice neutral sheer polish. I used two coats of it just because it kind of gives that nice negative look with like a finished look, meaning like it would be great for a French manicure. So there is that and we're going to let that white dry. Okay, so as I mentioned numerous times before is that I use acrylic paints to do basically all my detail work. Of course, I use nail polish for like things like flowers and such and definitely like when I'm using vinyls. But today we're going to be mixing some colors so I can kind of get a lighter, a grayer white so we can add some detail to our llama. So I'm going to take some of the white. Just kind of put it on the side here. This is like the palette that I don't clean very often. I just, it's easier when there's more on it because then you can kind of just um, peel off the paint, peel off the polish, but it's really nice to work from. And I don't ever squirt polish out, not polish, paint out onto the thing. I just use it from its cap flipped open. So we're just going to add a little bit of gray and I'm going to lightly kind of mix this as you can see I just want a very 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 light gray because we want it to kind of be the detailing on top of the white so we want it to stand out but we don't want it to be like 
whoa, there's gray lines. So we're just gonna add a teeny bit more because we can always add more white. And now I've got a little water on the brush too, which will help it kind of become more fluid. And now that I've got that done, I'm gonna clean off this brush, move these out of the way. I've got my palette up here to the front and we are going to add in our little details. So I'm using again the Midi Candy Zero Zero brush and what I kind of want to do is kind of just, you know how you create a floral, like a rose? You kind of just put rounds in a circular shape. It's kind of what I just want to do on the out side of our llama's head. Just to give a little texture, I want to do it lightly. And of course, since this is on top of white, if we don't end up liking it, we can change it. So I've got a few different like pictures of llama cakes because apparently llama cakes are a thing now and they're super popular and they're really cute and they're on Pinterest. So if you guys want to go check them out. Check them out on Pinterest. So I'm kind of basing the style of this off of those cakes. I have a whole bunch of screenshots of similar cakes and graphics of llamas on my iPad, which is next to me, so I can see what in the world I'm doing. Kind of get the, you know, feel, idea for what I am doing. So we're going to leave that little spot blank because that is where we're going to put in our llama's face. So now I'm going to kind of just fill in and give our llama's chest some texture. And I feel like this is really gonna add it to our llama's appearance, I hope anyway. I'm gonna do a little bit on the ears even though I probably will put some pink in its ears just to give it that ear look. So there is that. I'm going to that weird clinking that you guys hear, that's me cleaning off my brush. That's what you get with the paint with me. Which is, it's fun to do these actually, it's been a while. So there is that. I'm going to quickly transition out some of my paints and get ready for the next step. Okay, now I've got my black acrylic paint with me right here and I've got my white as well. So we are going to try to sketch on his face. I keep saying his, it'd be a girl because there's gonna be a floral crown. Oh well, so this is the part that makes me super nervous and I don't traditionally do it on camera because you know like the weird angles you have to go at. So we're just gonna start with the nose and the mouth. Goodness guys, you, like this is like the most nerve wracking thing to do from a weird angle is to do little details like this. Like I'm probably gonna have to do the eyeballs off camera just because it's hard. Okay, there's something resembling a mouth, a mouth there. So I think I'm gonna leave it before I wreck it. You know, like you get something going and it's like halfway decent and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna fix it here. And then you do that and it just fails. So I'm going to now Hmm, I think I'm gonna use a little, little dotting tool and dot on the eyes with black, but then we're later gonna go in with white and kind of build up the eyes because I feel like when you build up the eyes, it makes it look more real. So there are our eyes. I feel like they look weird, but oh well. <laughs> I guess it will look better. We will get there. Now, the great thing about acrylic paint, which I know I've mentioned before, is that it dries like super fast. So as you can see, one eye is like a little wonky compared to the other. So I'm just gonna make sure my brush is clean. We're gonna go in and kind of fix this little eyeball over here. Okay, so I may have made it a little too small, but I feel like compared to the flowers that we're going to put on, actually smaller for both of them would be good. So 
So, okay, now I gotta extend that one back out. See, this is, this is definitely real-time nail art with all the mistakes, which is kind of fun because... I mean, you see, like, nail tutorials, and you're like, oh gosh, they make it look so easy, but they, you don't realize they, they cut out some of those mess-ups. Which is perfectly fine. It makes things, like, super quick and easy to follow. I mean, we all do that. It's nothing crazy. But, I think the lighting just get all weird. I don't know. So next up, I'm kind of just going to add a little dot into the eyes. And hopefully that gave it some personality. So I'm going to let that dry while I get out some flower colors and I will be right back on. Okay, so as I was doing that, I was looking at it from a different angle and the eyes look kind of terrible. So we're going to fix these eyes. I almost went ahead and did it off camera, but I figured we all needed to see. I feel like, hold on, let me check. Yeah, I'm not happy with these. So we're just gonna black them all out again. And rebuild our eyes. Because this is exactly that thing that I just said. It happens, you start over because you failed. Not failed, you just, you know, the brush went the wrong direction, right? Okay, let me grab the white. One. Okay, I've got the white and we are ready. <laughs> kind of ready to try again. Eyes are just some of the hardest things to do. For sure. So hard. There, I try to keep the dots more concentrated on the sides because I feel like, you know, it creates a glimmer in their eye. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so there we have the eyes intact. I'm not 100% happy with them, but I feel like if I keep just like redoing them, I'm, I'm not going to be happy with them either way. So I am okay with them. So now we're just going to start the flower crown. That's not on the super trendy cakes of the llamas, but I like the look because I think it's cute. Why not put a flower crown on every animal that you can paint? <laughs> Maybe some people think it's over the top, but I think it's fun and cute. And it just, you know, it adds a little something. Right? I hope. <laughs> so I am just using like a light sky blue, which is very similar to this polish that I'm wearing. It is not polish. It is acrylic paint, but it is very reminiscent of the blue polish that I have on all of my other nails, which if you are wondering what that is, that is a new China Glaze from the Shades of Paradise collection called Waterfalling in Love. It was in one of my more recent swatch videos that came out last week. It actually might have been last Wednesday. No, it was last Monday. So there we go. I've got my three blue ones. And now it's time for light purple. I'm really hoping that this looks like a llama and not like a bunny, but I just realized like it might actually look like a bunny. So we might have to give it some definition in its face to make it look not like a bunny. So I'm going to grab that gray again. I'm really hoping you guys can hear the audio on this. <laughs> nope, that's silver. Okay, I've got the gray. We're just going to try to add some definition to its face or its chest, whichever way you kind of want to interpret it. So we've got its face kind of going on here. And then we've got like its fuzzy chest here. So I'm going to just add some of that darker gray into there. And hopefully this kind of resembles a llama. I feel like it doesn't. But eh, we'll see. I feel like it's not terrible, but I feel like I need to redo its mouth. Let me think here. 
Yeah, I'm gonna redo its mouth. So let's get some pink and redo it. Okay, so off camera, I grabbed a peachy corally pink, which is this right here, that I'm gonna use to kind of create the snout, which is what I've seen done on numerous like prints and cakes. And we're also going to use that in the inner ear. So we're just gonna take that like that, and hopefully it doesn't look like a bunny. I feel like it does. But maybe fixing the mouth will help. So, basically you want kind of an oval shape for its mouth. So we're just going to work over this black. And I feel like I need to like dilute this pink a little bit. So I'm just going to use my water lid cover and do that it needs to be a bit lighter and actually I think I'm gonna add some white because it is way too coral. So I'm just gonna mix it on the slid right here. I'm gonna take this. Got a lot of white in there but actually it's like the perfect color right there. It's light and I think it'll cover what we're trying to cover. Yeah. Okay. This isn't terrible. Oh, I just realized you guys might not be able to see what I'm doing. So I've kind of just created like a, this oval shape where its snout would be. And that is that. We're gonna clean this up a bit, get it so we're back in the center of the camera, and let that dry. And then we will add its nose and its mouth. Okay, now that we've got its little snout on, I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna try to remember to insert some pictures of what I am looking at as I'm doing this in the light corner or something so you guys can kind of see where my thought process is coming from on this design, which I realize is gonna make this video take longer to edit but I think that could be a really fun feature to add to these videos so you guys can kind of see how like the whole thing comes together like not only the art but the thoughts behind the design so we're kind of just doing a parenthesis for its nose and then we're gonna take it straight down a little bit which hmm, is not very straight <laughs> let's just tell you what let's clean this up before that other paint dries I'm just gonna grab some of this paint and kind of clean up this little section right here and I feel like that little movement just did so much for us okay now we're just going to take that back down and I want to give it, it's like smile lines. And there is our nose and mouth. I need to look at it from like the front on position real quick. So let me do that. And there is that. I am actually really pleased for the most part with that. I feel like it kind of resembles a llama. So at this point, I am going to grab some gold paint. And we're just going to add some gold into the flower crown because I feel like just like some metallicness will like complete everything and bring it all together. And this is going to be like the only like nail I think I'm going to add some gold on to the other nails just to like bring it all together but after we add this gold we are gonna be good to go and it'll just need some top coat so there is the added gold I just literally dotted it on no specific particular way so there is our llama before top coat Okay, so what I've decided to do is just kind of put like little triangles all over my nails to bring it all together. This gold is acrylic paint and it doesn't 
come off the most pigmented, but I feel like it does enough that you guys can see what I'm doing. And I realize that the shadow is really bad whenever I am kind of like reaching over my hand. So I do apologize for that, but I wasn't sure what I was doing on the first nail. So I just quickly did that to test it. And I was at a really weird angle, so we're just gonna add in these triangles. And then when the triangles are done on all of my nails, we will then apply our top coat, which top coat wise, you definitely wanna use something that you know is not gonna smear your art because there's nothing worse than spending time on nail art, putting on a top coat to have it smear your art that you just spent a good amount of time on. That's literally one of the worst things so one thing i have learned over the years is that acrylic paint does eat the top coat so sometimes you will need two or three coats depending upon how much acrylic paint you use in your design and there's nothing wrong with using it in your design it just might take a few coats of top coat which is perfectly fine so it's just something to keep in mind. I usually use, say, the first coat of something that I definitely know is not going to smear, a shadow of a doubt, it's not going to smear my art. And then after that, I decide if I want the art done in matte finish or a shiny finish, and then just add whatever top coat or matte top coat I want for this design, and that is what I do. Because I feel like a lot of intricate detailed nail art really benefits from a matte top coat because it really helps make everything really pop and photograph better because I mean it's obvious that every time I do nail art I am going to photograph it for Instagram for the blog for YouTube for something so I need it to show on a camera with the minimal amount of shine lines because I mean you've got a good top coat you're gonna have those shine lines and that's not something you want to like get rid of per se but it's something you have to work with and sometimes to get the most out of your design you do have to go ahead and put on a matte top coat just to make it all pop so I'm not sure if this is focused or not but I'm just gonna kind of put some triangles on my thumb. I'm holding my thumb really weirdly to get it on camera so you guys can see this hopefully. Okay, so I had to finish up the triangles off camera because my camera died, but now it is time for top coat. So I'm going in with Maxis Nail Top Coat, which I have been recently really enjoying. It is super shiny and it just, it works really well so I'm gonna apply that to all my nails as you can see it did not smear the nail art which is the priority thing for this design and that is gonna be it there is our final manicure with our llama I really enjoyed doing this I feel like it came out pretty well here is a bit of a closer look I don't know yet if I'm going to keep the shiny top coat. I'm probably going to have to put on a second one or go matte to get photos. But you guys are about ready to see that photo right now. So let's take a look at the final pictures. And that's a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to let me know in the comments below if you guys like this more like live tutorial type thing. And if you do, I might just have to do more. So leave your suggestions down for upcoming videos and be sure to like and subscribe to keep up to date on all of the latest videos. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.